Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Road to Goaty 2019, this time on Dragon Quest Builders 2. This video will have some spoilers. This is my island that uh, I have been building on, my Buildertopia. Uh, we will go make it day by going to the inn and then I'll give you a full full surveying of it while I, uh, while I talk about my thoughts on this game. Uh, this is one of the best games of the year, in my opinion. I'm going to let you know right now that uh, I absolutely enjoyed this game. Um, some of the story stuff, particularly in Chapter 3, really dragged down. But then by the end, by the time you get to the end of the game and the last area and everything that happens there, it's really solid. All right, we will... Uh, there's also a bunch of, like, new features added, including this. Don't worry about that track up there. I was trying to build a track over to this other side, but there's an invisible wall right there. Stop you from building too much. This game really is a really fun story, and then once you complete the story, you then have a sandbox, basically, to play around with to build in. So I built my staircase here. Up into my workshop. So grab some gold real quick. And then from my workshop, still gotta work on everything I wanna do over there. And I still kinda wanna do something with this railway. Bring it up mainly, I don't know. That's still in progress down there. Uh, but then we go across the bridge into my Sky City. Sky Kingdom, I guess. We have the bell here. Get everybody gathered up together. Really like this little communal bell. And then everybody running forward is really cool. I love the fact that in the post game you can add monsters to your world. You can technically do that early on too with the Island of Awakening. But like in your Builder Topias, you can just bring everybody over here. So I just have everybody over here because why wouldn't I? We have the training room where everybody gets to train and have a good time and we have church the cathedral that i built zoom in here and let you get a look at it from the inside i originally had like a raised platform here but that didn't quite work the way that i planned for it too for anybody who's like man in these other road to goatee videos you've really spent some time just talking about like the game and everything there this is kind of what the game is it's a building game it's designed to First playthrough, you know, you're running through the story, you're doing everything there, you're meeting all these cool characters, you're getting to know them, you're helping them solve their problems, and I really enjoyed most of the stories. Again, it was just Island 3 that really dragged down for me. The other two I absolutely adored, and I really was kind of sad to leave some of them. But then, after a little while, you know, when you get through Island 3, which again, is very slow... And you get into Island 4 and everything that happens there. The stuff with Malroth and how good all of that is. I actually love Malroth as a character, by the way. He's great. He's just running around doing stuff over there, but he is great. Um, the majority of the game, though, is still building. Especially once you've completed the story. There's not really any more story stuff to do at that point. It's just kind of, hey, do your challenges on the Island of Awakening. And then build whatever you want. That said, being able to build whatever you want. Being able to gather up an island and and put a bunch of people there and get them to doing tasks like cooking and everything like that is really cool. I wish they wouldn't run on the walls. I wish there was a way I could easily stop them from doing that because that's kind of frustrating, but, you know. Also, the stained glass window. Uh, then we have, of course, all these wonderful bridges that I built. And again, all of this I put down by hand, which is really cool. I think, I think there's a lot of enjoyment to have just in the I'm going to build my own little kingdom out here. This is my garden. Everybody comes to gather crops to be able to go cook with. We have a little connection over here. There's a little hangout over there that I didn't notice. So we're going to move it real quick. That's really this game. It's not anything too fancy once you've completed the story. It's kind of just, hey, what do you want to build? You can build it. Uh, I'll look into my inventory in a minute if we get up on the tour and show you just the, the sheer variety of things that you have. But like, my Sky Island is not, or my Sky Kingdom is not even that big, really, but, like, there's so much more room to build out there, and I'm excited to build more. That's what I keep coming back to now that I've completed the story, because the story was the main draw for a long time. But now it's kind of, I want to build all the rooms, and I want to, you know, continue to expand out, and I want to make this vast Sky Kingdom up here. Uh, and I want it to be cool. This is the hotel that I built. Come inside here. I like this hotel a lot. Different floors. It mostly was like a big dormitory for everybody to sleep. I needed to curve the stairwell, so I had to figure out a way to make that work. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And then up here is the top floor. 
you can look out the window and see everybody working in the fields out there. And I need to make bigger fields too. Fields are kind of small, but. And then just in case I need to get up on top and work on stuff again, I kept a ladder out here. That back out. So that I could go back up to the top. That took forever, by the way. That specialized window pattern right there. It took forever to get that right. Oh, missed the ladder. And then from up there, one more. You can form a party too. So like I could still have Malroth running around with me if I wanted to. But I kind of like just letting him do his own thing, you know? He's having a good time. I'm having a good time. We got bathrooms here. The boys and the girls. It's the guy's bathroom. Collect some more poop. Eat it. Girls' bathroom's over there. We don't need to go in there. I've got this fountain. I wanted to make it just deep enough I could drown in it. No real reason why. I just felt like that was an important thing for this fountain. Which is not really safe, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, got a large cool room here. That I'm gonna turn into a like workout room, as you can see, into like a gym for everybody. Going to the bar in a second. Have our music room in here. Whoops. Do I have a sheet of music in my inventory? Might as well check out the inventory here. As you can see, a lot of stuff in it. It is kind of unfortunate when uh, your inventory gets full. Because you don't only have the seven pages, so that eventually you do have to come back and, and empty some of it out or put it in chests and things like that. But lots of space, really. Hey, Balroth. I think you can get him to high five you still too, but he might have to be in a party with you first. And then sometimes he'll just walk up to you and go, "Hey, it's been a while since we high five. Do you want to high five?" And it's like, "Yeah, I do want to high five. How'd you know, Balroth?" Oh, they're not making anything in the in the deals right now. Come on, guys. What are you doing? But this is my bar. I love this carpet that I put down in here. It's so cool. I eventually need to put roofs on all of this stuff as well. Hey, Malroth. How's it going? Um, I do think Malroth is probably the strongest thing about this game when it comes to the story. The building is a ton of fun, and I love doing it. But Malroth is where it really shines. There's so much good in the story with him as he slowly develops into a character and then you have to deal with with his weird intricacies and working together with him to try and solve your problems the boss fights are pretty good i think the monster combat for the most part is really solid we'll head out here and get into some of it actually let's put Malroth in our party and then we'll go fight some monsters want to join my party Malroth? you can join our party too by checking out the patreon link in the <laughs> Uh, let's see. Malroth, Malroth, Malroth. Yes. Drop a party, Malroth. Okay, let's go. Oop. And then, of course, he hangs from your legs while you glide. Uh, let's fight a monster real quick. There's got to be some out here. I just, I really love this game, man. It's pretty. It's a lot of fun to build in. It's a lot of fun to play around in. It's really just a sandbox once you beat the game. There's... I'll show off some of the crafting in a minute, too, because that is definitely an important thing. But for the most part now, it's just, hey, what do I want to do? You know? How do I want to continue for? There's a lot that I could do at any time, but the majority of it now is just, hey, let's have fun. Which is cool, because I think the story is really good, but kind of long. And so the reward for completing the story is the ability to just play around in the world and have a good time. Might, might have already, because we have a pretty substantial group of people. They might have already killed most of the monsters. That's all right, too. I do want to show the crafting off. The combat's pretty basic. Mostly just that. Although, if you hold it, the charge attack. Like that. And eventually, you'll get a meter buildup that you can't see that uh, allows you to do combo attacks with Malroth. So that's pretty cool, too. Thanks, Malroth. 802. Alright. Go back up to the base. You say, well, there's a monster. That's not a monster. That's our friend. Yeah. It's Griswold. No, Griswold's the slime. That's the captain. 
Now all the monsters have names. Um, all individual. They're all special. Every one. Materials that I drop on the beach before. And almost all of the characters that I have come from the story. There are a few that I found on other islands. Because there's a lot of different islands you can explore as well. You unlock islands as you go that allow you to get infinite of specific kinds of materials. So, for instance, I could make... I have infinite wood, infinite cord, infinite grass. I have as much of that as I need. So I can make as much of that as I want. Or use as much of it as I want in various different supplies. Because I completed challenges on special islands that I found. And I unlocked those islands by paying friendship points. My friendship points are currently 1,879. Uh... Those friendship points are unique to this island. They add up to a whole, but they're separate from the ones on the Island of Awakening. But you gather those by just letting townspeople build or farm or cook or clean themselves or sleep or any of the various things that they do. And of course, each of them just does their own thing, you know? Everybody's happy. The only thing I really wish at this point in the post game was that when I talk to them, I could still have actual like conversations with them. Because, like, some of them, like Lulu or Annette here, like, they're pretty interesting characters, and you kind of just can't really talk to them anymore, which is a shame. But, for the most part, I really like this game. I think it's really fun. The only small complaints that I would have would be, uh, again, not really being able to spend much time with your party members once, or any time, really. You just let them do tasks. They, they kind of stop being characters, which is a shame. But, at least you do get them for most of the adventure that way. Uh, before the post game and the post game is really for the sake of building it still is a shame though and the other big one is the loading times are sometimes really annoying when going in between islands but you have a bunch of different tools to be able to set down blocks so, like for instance you have your basic place uh but you have all of these different tools to play around with so you have like this one here that's a fill mode it allows you to do this you can angle it up and down of course, we want to get those back up because we don't want those on top of the church being in the way. Yep. Uh, you have things like the gloves that allow you to pick up a block and move it. Like this. Uh, of course, I put it in the wrong spot. Yep. Uh, you have things like the bottomless pot that allow you to pour water. You pick water back up again. Don't want a puddle of water coming off the top of a church, so we'll take care of that. Uh, the echo flute that lets you know if there's ore nearby. There is no ore nearby. No, like, good ore. Pencil that allows you to draw out a plan for a building. And the chisel that allows you to cut the tops of blocks off, which is actually, like, really cool. As you can see, you can do some really crazy stuff with it. In fact, we might just... Put all of these on. Why is it doing that one backwards? Why are these backwards? Just to give it a different look from the ground. We chisel it from the other side too? No. What if we do the, uh, the other flat chisel? Oh, that looks really good, actually. Yeah, let's do that. We'll show off the recipes, too. To show just all the different stuff you can make to build stuff out of. This is why I don't have rooms on a lot of buildings, so I can drop into them from high places. But, honestly, I need to get to building some rooms at some point. There's a lot of stuff. Let's play some music, too. Make this real quick. There's a lot of stuff that you can make. And because of that, there's a lot of different options for how you want to build your rooms, what you want to make them, what you want them to do. Uh, I can see myself making the Sky Island for quite a while and probably getting really, uh, really in depth into like, which windows do I want to use for this building and what wall type do I want to use? And I, have again, I haven't even really got into a lot of the roof options. Ugh, man, there's a lot of options and I love it. Like, I, I know I, I seem kind of uh, overwhelmed by it, but I really do enjoy the sheer level of options that you have. And even like in your farming, sluice gates, because like I've got to make that farm way bigger. There's too many people on this island for that uh, that size of farm to be able to support them forever. 
uh, your different options for lighting, including like paper lanterns that you can then dye different colors, uh, light blocks that you can then dye different colors. You have all your various furniture in the form of chairs and benches and toilets and pots and pans and planters and you have your decorative items that allow you to, to make rooms fancier or to turn them into very specific kinds of rooms. You have your wall hangings. There's just so many options. And then you can even dress people up in different clothes or give them different weapons and things like that. And at some point, I'm going to put in a rail system here like I have on the Island of Awakening so that I can easily get around. And I might even mess with some pistons and try to set up some defenses here. Even though it doesn't really look like monsters want to stick around with how many people that I have here defending everything. As you can see, there's a whole squad on the ground down there defending everything. Killing any monsters they see. But play some music real quick. What do you think about that, pal? This guy, I think, is supposed to be based on Hyadan, which is really cool. But that's neither here nor there. I just really like this game. I think that watching my town, you know, come to life as I put it together here on this island with all these characters that, you know, I've been with through the story, some of them from Island One, you know, and, and work together with them to build all kinds of great, cool structures and fight some great bosses. And then now we just all get to relax and chill on this sky island where nobody can hurt us and nobody can mess with us, you know. I really like it. I think. I think that's a really cool reward. I still wish that when I talked to, like, the king, for instance, he would be like, oh, my boy, it's good to see you again. But at the same time, I like this game a lot. I think it's really good. Uh, I think that if you were on the fence about picking this game up, you absolutely should. The building aspect alone, I think, makes it worth it. But the story is really solid, and I absolutely love Malroth as a character. Maybe my favorite character of the year so far. He's really good. But until next time, I've been Trey. This has been The Full Spectrum. And remember to always enjoy The Full Spectrum. The Dragon Quest Builders 2 has to offer.